Happy Wednesday. Thank you for your patience. Everybody's been early in the chat room, so we've been hanging out, chatting. Seriously, if you not joined us ever in the early bird chat, you need to be there. And it's really super easy. If you go over on my YouTube channel, I try to put the, the video screen so you can just click on that. And then the side chat room pops up so you can join us in the early bird chat. But yeah, so it's just a really... I just love it. You guys are so amazing. And thank you for spending your day with me today. I got my sippy cup of coffee. I know many of you got your coffee ready. So let me go ahead and move this over. All right. So let's go ahead and do an early bird glitter spinner. I have these rainbow adhesive back dots. So pretty. So let me go ahead and put this in picture and picture. There we go. And then let me put my comments on my screen so I can see you guys. Doing a shout out to everybody. Hi, guys. Oh, everybody's like, has she started? No, we start at 3 o'clock Eastern on Wednesdays, remember? So um, depending on what time zone you're in, sometimes it's 1 o'clock, sometimes it's 12 o'clock, sometimes it's 2 o'clock. But we're here on Eastern time. That's when I go live because I'm in Michigan. So I'm here live on Wednesday at three o'clock. So put it in your phone for save the date. So you know you're gonna join me here every Wednesday at three o'clock, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and leave my iPad on my stand. You guys know this is legit. I'm gonna spin the spinner. And then this is going by all your comments. So I'm gonna spin the comments and then somebody's name's gonna pop up on the screen and you're gonna win the rainbow dots, all right? So super easy. And this is just by leaving a comment on our live, all right? So let me spin the comments. Spinning, spinning, spinning. <laughs> all right, right here. Who is this? Margaret! Whoop, whoop. Margaret, Margaret. Let me put your name on these here, Margaret. M-A-R-G-A-R-E-T. B-O-U-R-G-O-I-N-E. And you got the rainbow. I think I have your address too, right? I know. I think I, I'm pretty sure, 100% sure that I do have your address, Margaret. All right. And these are the dots. Yay, Margaret. Woo-hoo. All right. Let me put these on here. And Richard and I are going to be heading out this evening. And I will drop these off in the mailbox since I already have your address. That makes it so nice. So remember, if you're new to the Glitter Pit, once you win something or you join my team or you're one of my customers, once you win something, I will have your address. But until I get your address, if you win ever, please reach out to me and email me here. This is my email address. This is how you guys can contact me with any questions or concerns or ideas for suggestions for projects. This is Dawn, and then the at sign, theglitterpit.com. Don't forget the. So it's Dawn at theglitterpit.com. So we put it to a jingle so you guys can remember it. Super easy. So you, you are allowed to sing it when you type it. <laughs> so that is my contact information. So if you ever win and I don't have your information, all you have to do is just email me here. And then give me your physical street address, all right? And then once I have it, you're good. You're in like Flint, right? So it's like um, if you ever win a blog candy or a glitter giveaway or a glitter spinner or anything like that, then I'll have your address and then I'll just go ahead and send it out. Now, if you move or something, then you got to let me know too. So kind of like what you do with your bank and your online banking and all your on online bill paying and stuff. You got to change all that. Put me on the list to let me know when you change your address. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and start with the updates. I want to go over something too. So if you have any friends that are um, using the cutest cow, man, I really butchered that punch last week, but let me tell you, I figured everything out. So I'm going to go through that as a little quick um, I guess the FYI, so in case you're wondering, that cutest cow punch, like what are all those pieces go to? We're going to demonstrate that today. All right, so 
But first, let's go through the weekly updates. Here is the brand new host code that's going to go for um, 30 days. So you'll get your small gift towards the middle of March. So use this host code on any orders under $150. The brand new Latte Love class. This includes six cards, three designs, two of each, and a box. I'll show you here. I'm not going to show you the cards, but I'll show you the box. You're going to get everything to make the six cards and the box. This is the box that you're going to make, and it has all six cards inside with envelopes. There's two options for this class. There's one that's a product-based class and also just the cards and the box. Okay, so all the information is posted over on my website today. And I do want to make a clarification that I was really debating on whether or not to do this class because I'm not expediting the products when you guys, you know, you guys are going to be purchasing either the product-based class with the stamp set and dies. Both options for the class will include a quarter pack of the A Little Latte Love designer paper, which looks like this. So it's up to you. If you want just the cards and the box and the designer paper, that's an option. And then if you want the stamp set, the dies, and the, the swirly dots, which look like these, that is option number one, okay? So I will be ordering all the items on March 5th when the product goes live for the online exclusives. The only thing is, is eight days later, I am leaving for on stage. And I know for a fact when I order slow mail, like normal shipping with Stampin' Up! for me that I live in Michigan, the order typically takes a full seven days, right? And that's if everything goes on as planned. So, and then I leave for Texas on the 13th of March for four days. So, when you're signing up for this class, this is where I was debating on whether or not to offer it. But just know that if, if and when you sign up for either one of the classes, the classes will be sent out probably around the 20th. So, they'll be slightly late. And that's only because I am not expediting the shipping for the order. And the expedition, the exp, the ex, the faster shipping is going to cost hundreds of dollars. So I'm not going to pass that on to you and I'm not going to eat that for my business. So we're just going to do the regular mail and it'll be here in a week. And then just know that your class kit will be sent out after I get back from Houston. So if you're okay with that. Go ahead and hop on over. The link is also listed down below in the description box for you to go check out all the details and pick your option that you're most interested in, okay? So both options will get a pack or a quarter pack of the designer paper, which looks like this. And then six cards, three designs, two of each, and you'll be making the box, okay? Now, whether or not you want the stamp set and the dies and the little embellishments, that's totally up to you, but that will be extra. But both the options are over there. And here's a little sneak peek of the projects. They're so cute. I finished them up on Monday. So that's why I wasn't posting on my blog this week, Monday and Tuesday mainly. Plus, a lot of stuff has been going on with my family, mainly Richard. <laughs> Richard had a bad tooth, and we finally got it figured out, and he finally went to the dentist. I don't know what it is about guys that just don't want to go to the dentist. I get it. The dentist is not the most, most joyful place to go, but as much pain as he was in, you would think that would have been the first stop. But anyway, so after how many days? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday... After five days of dealing with the pain and no sleep and, you know, just terrible, terrible pain, he finally went to the dentist on Monday, which was two days ago, and he ends up having to get an implant in the very back tooth. So, needless to say, Monday they yanked the tooth out and they had to take a part of his bone out and put, um, what is that, like a... I want to say a fake bone, but they had to put another piece of a bone or something that's like manufactured bone. And then they stitched him up. So it's been two days. I feel like he's on the mend. But then after we get back from on stage, which will be about four weeks, he'll have to go in and get that implant put in on that Monday after we get back. So the drama is not over, but at least the pain has subsided and he's just dealing with, the, you know, the inflammation and the 
And plus he's on an antibiotic, a mouthwash antibiotic, and then he's also on pain medicine. So he's um, on the mend, but man, he fought it like tooth and nail. Let me tell you, no pun intended. <laughs> so having to deal with my husband, I, I was telling somebody today, it's like being a mom, it's like you would rather have the stuff happen to you than your husband or your children or any, you know, loved ones, just because you don't want them to go through all that. Oh, so needless to say, it's going to be very expensive for him to have this procedure. We'll deal that. We'll deal with that when it comes, I guess, right? All right, we are also down to the last eight days of celebration. I cannot believe it's already flown by so freaking fast. The mini celebration mini brochure, the items, I still believe they're all available. And then remember we, well, Stampin' Up, not we, but Stampin' Up has added nine more items to the list for more selections for you guys and for us demonstrators. So check out all that and don't miss your favorites. Remember, this ends on the 29th of March, which I think is next, uh, what day is it? The 24th is Saturday, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, next Thursday, I guess. I think, I think it's next Thursday. Okay, so make sure you get your favorites. I got my online exclusives. This is another online exclusive. There's a lot of cute things on the online exclusives this time. And then, um, remember I mentioned that I got the stamp set, which I got it out here. I wanna show you what that looks like. <clears throat> Let me show you this really quick. This is the Simply, I wanna say it's Zienna. And these beautiful flowers here. So, and this is gorgeous greetings. It's so pretty. This also comes with a bundle with the die collection that coordinates with the stamp set. Remember, this online exclusive items are only available online at my online store. They will not be in any publication. So, make sure you're checking the online exclusives, all right? And then this also has these sequins that are absolutely beautiful. A big package of them, too. And these got adhesive on the back. These are actually called, let me tell you what the name of them are. Adhesive back shiny sequins. Wow, that's original. <laughs> but I told you guys that I had gotten this bundle, but I didn't get the designer paper. Well, I got the designer paper, and I have to show you it. It's so beautiful. So let me show you this paper really quick. This is the, the designer paper that coordinates with this stamp set. Okay. This flyer will be posted on my website here shortly. But this is the paper, and the paper is called Flowering Ziennas. Am I saying that right? It's so pretty. This is the back side. You got the gorgeous grape, pretty flowers. It's so springy feeling here in Michigan. It's like high 50s. The sun is shining. We got longer days. I am so happy. My heart's happy. I just feel like spring might be around the corner, but I'm not I'm not holding my breath. Because we have had snow as late as Mother's Day sometimes. So um, as much as I love the nice weather and the birds are chirping, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. But I just feel like it is mid-February. It's still winter. Ooh, petal pink. Isn't this paper beautiful? And it's a little bit thicker than, I, th I feel like it's a little bit thicker than our regular designer paper. So it's going to be nice for boxes and bags. Ooh, the parakeet party or lemon lime twist. That's pretty. And then the last piece, remember this is a pack of, you're going to get two pieces of 12 by 12 of each design and they're double sided. Ooh, this is stars on the back. So pretty. I love it. All right, so that will be on the online exclusives, which will come, which will be released on, excuse me, March 5th. The same day, I'm going to pre-order all your card kits for you guys for the Latte Love. Er, yeah, Latte Love. The mini catalog, even though Celebration is expiring on February 29th, this mini catalog goes through the end of April, all right? So make sure you're getting all that. And then we have, soon after that, we have the retirement list. I think that might even be out in April. The retirement list for the annual catalog. And then the new annual catalog will begin on May 1st. 
So stay tuned for all that. All my customers, you guys know if you've placed an order with me within the last six months, you guys will get that catalog first in the first mailing, all right? And then this is the printable for your guys' card that we're going to make today. A big shout out to my friend Michelle, Michelle Suit. <laughs> I always want to say sweet. But she was the one that showed me this card and then she pointed me in the direction on where to make the card. So a big shout out to Michelle and then a big shout out to Sam Colcott. She is Mixed Up Crafts over on YouTube and she was the one that originally came up with this card, I believe. So, but we're going to put our little twist on it, the glitter pit way. We're going to make this card a regular size card to fit into an A2 envelope. So there's going to be slight difference in measurements and scoring, all right? But you can get the printable listed down below and then also on my website starting tomorrow morning about 7 o'clock. Okay? Yay! All right, so before we jump into today's card, I want to go through the cutest cow. You guys might remember this punch and the stamp set that we used last week. And many of you were wondering what all these pieces were for. And if any of my team are on here, you guys are going to remember, we went through this punch together last week, and there was an image on the punch that we were kind of confused about. I figured it out. I swear, I had a dream about it. <laughs> you know you're hooked on stamping when you dream about stamping, right? Seriously. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to stamp some cows. I'm going to show you all these pieces to the cow. So I'm going to stamp out a couple bodies. Because the, the two obvious ones are the head and the body, right? So we're going to stamp a couple bodies because I'm going to build a couple of these cows with you guys. Okay? And then we're going to stamp a couple of the faces. All right, remember last week when I said that you can punch out the little, um, like the nose area in the petal pink? I did bring over some petal pink. You can punch out the little, um, the face part. Uh, let me stamp the cow and I'll show you the cow face. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. But you still can punch and stamp the cow. So this is if you want to make your cow more 3D. You know what I mean? I'm going to stamp a couple of his faces too. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and punch these out. Because these are pretty self-explanatory. You know what these pieces go to. So you can punch out your cow body here. Right? I'm going to punch out both of them. Okay. So we got my cow body. Right there. And then we're going to punch out the cow face. I feel like this part is very informative because if you're like me, I wasn't aware of all these pieces as we started playing around with them. I'm like, man, that doesn't look right for a cow face. You know what I mean? All right, so we got our cow pieces mainly stamped and cut out, right? So now we're going to take, let me show you this piece here. Remember how I thought this was a face? This is the nostrils and the little quirky smile right here, right? I still don't know what that is because it looks kind of like eyes and eyebrows. So if anybody knows what that right there is, let me know. So right now we're going to take our petal pink and I'm going to stamp my nose and the smile on the petal pink. And let me see how my punch is here. So we're going to stamp this upside down. Remember when you're stamping... And then you're punching. If you're like me, I use the punch upside down. So when you're stamping your image, you want to make sure it kind of coordinates with the punch the way you're punching it. So I'm going to stamp my nostrils and my mouth upside down. So this part right here on the punch is what we're going to punch out. Right over here. And it fits in there perfectly. Look at that. You see it? So cute. All right. And then I wanted to also show you the horns, you know, to make your um, cow a bull cow, right? So here's the horns, right? So we're going to stamp those. Now this 
is for this image over here that kind of looks like a, a telephone thing, like old timers, old telephone. You know, like, hello, ring, ring, ring. See it? All right, so we're going to stamp this also upside down. And I'm going to stamp this on basic white. But I'm also going to show you how you can use it with the cow if you just want to stamp his face. Okay, so we're going to stamp the horns this way. And then I'm going to stamp another face right here. Now, if you're stamping the face and then you're stamping the horns, you can't punch it out. This way is you're going to punch out the face first and then you can add the horns. Or if you just cut out like a circle and you just want to stamp the face and the horns, you can do that, which is the way I'm going to show you right now. So add your face, okay, like that. And then you're going to take the horns and then you can just, and then this is a photopolymer stamp set so you can line it up really good. And then you can stamp the horns right on your cow face. See, so now it's a bull or a boy cow, right? So let's say we just want to add our horns to our face. Now I'm going to have to punch this out here so that one cow is going to get messed up. But we're going to fit this right inside of that punch right there. Can you see that? These horns right here. And of course it would be better if I did a thinner piece, but there's my horns, right? So now we're going to take one of these cows and we're going to build the horns on the top and we're going to put the little muzzle. I'm going to use liquid glue. I'm going to put the horns on the top. this down here okay so there's my cow with the cow face punched out with the horns added with the punch right and then we're going to add our little muzzle and I'm going to use mini dimensionals for that and I'm going to put this over top of his face on the part where I'm going to put this petal paint piece let me get my toothpick tool and you're just going to line that up with the previous stamped image. So there's your cow face with the punch, with your the muzzle punched out with the petal pink, and then your horns if you want to add them, all right? So then I'm just going to go ahead and color this in really quick. So you get the whole picture, all right? And then I take the petal pink and color in his ears. Okay, so, so far so good, right? All right, now I wanted to show you this because this is what we stumped on with my team on last week. So what I did is I punched out just a basic white cow face, right? Remember, this is what we did last week too. And then I'm gonna stamp another muzzle here. So let me take my little nose holes and my smirky smile. Stamp that upside down. Right? Oh, you know what? I bet you that is his face, his eyes. I just thought of it, you guys. That is his face. These are his eyes because the way we're building it right now, you need the eyes because I just punched out the basic white without stamping it, right? So let me get the eyes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna stamp the eyes and the eyebrows, right? So yes, this is it. So stamping the eyes and the eyebrows just on a piece of basic white cutting out the face, right? Then we're gonna pop up the, the muzzle or his nose piece, right? With the mini dimensional. This is if you don't want to punch his face or stamp his face. This is just you making your cow face building it. Like the builder punch. Like it's. Oh my gosh. It's so cute. Okay. So let me show you this now. So now this is just with the cow face with the white. 
Now, this piece right here is what we were stumped on. We were thinking, is it cutting out the mini rooster? Is it cutting out the tail? And it's this piece right here, right underneath the, the horns, this piece right here. But look what that piece is. I'm gonna cut out that piece with the basic black. Okay, it's right here. <laughs> you guys are gonna laugh. You probably already know this, but I was so geeked out. All right, we're gonna cut this dimensional in half, this little mini dimensional, because we don't need that big. And this is gonna be his hair on the top of his forehead. <laughs> Just like his face right here, look. So this right here is what we're putting on his white face. <laughs> That's so funny. How come we didn't figure that out last week, you guys? All right, so here's his little hairdo. And then you're gonna put that right on the top of his head. That's what that piece is for. Look how cute. And then you can put this on his body. Let me color in this body here really quick. So we can see the whole picture, right? Okay, so color in his spots. This is not the best color job here. Okay, so I just used the basic black. And then you're gonna take another mini dimensional. We're gonna put on this white head, right? This is gonna go right here. Look how cute! That's building the cow face with just the punch and cardstock, that's it. So you don't even need to punch the face or stamp the face, you know what I mean? Look how cute. And then let's, let's put this body on this one so you guys can see the difference. I mean, oh my gosh, that hair. Are you got, are my glitter queens here from last week? You guys remember, we were trying to rack our brains about it. It kind of does work for the tail too. Because the tail is kind of like that shape of his little hairdo, you know? All right, let me show you both of them here, side by side. One with the stamped face and one with just using the builder punch to build the face. Now this one is cute because you actually stamp the face and then add the, the little muzzle. And then look at this one. Look how cute. Seriously? So those are all the punches of your cow builder punch. Yay! I had to share that with you guys last week because I totally butchered it last week. Oh my gosh. And then I had a dream about it. So hopefully that helps you guys, right? All right, now let me clean up my mess. This card we're making today is pretty easy anyway, so. Isn't it cute? So cute. I love it. All right, let me clean up my mess here really quick. Let me just get my basket and push everything into the garbage. So did that answer a lot of your questions about the, the punch on what everything is for? Or did you guys already know? <laughs> That's all right. We're here to, um, you know what they say, iron sharpens iron. So we're all here to encourage each other, right? So I know I learned something new. So hopefully it helped you guys out too. I think it'd be cuter to stamp the face and then add the other part. Yeah, it's either way. Colleen, I agree. It's so cute either way, but this is an option, right? You could build the face, like you could put the hair, pop it up, pop the muzzle up. So it could be like a 3D cow all the way around. Like his whole face could be 3D. You know what I mean? It's so cute. So if you didn't want to do like a white face, I'm just saying you could build on his face the muzzle and his hairdo because it all is matchy-matchy. Okay? All right. That's it. That was my um, little, what do you call a little demo here for a minute, right? All right. Hopefully that was helpful. 
right, let me get my printable so I can tell you guys all the right measurements here. All right, this book is, or this card is called The Book Cradle. And I know that sounds really weird, but when you actually look at the card, and now I know it's going to be scary, but don't be scared. We're going to go through this together. It's going to be so easy. I'm not kidding, you guys. It looks complicated, but look at this card, the way it sits up. So stinking cute. Look, I don't, you guys can't see it, but it looks like this from the side. Right? It looks so complicated. <laughs> but it's not. All right. So um, when we cut this card, it's going to fit an A2 size for your envelope, which is awesome. I think Sam's was like a bigger card. I want to say five by seven. And you guys can look at that card too. But this one is more for like, you know, the A2 size. But then I also stamped the back and added the little designer paper cutout for the coffee cup, and then I added some steam. So I'm gonna show you how I did all that too, all right? All right, let's go. I'm gonna actually cut the pieces. Oh, and here is the, the bundle, the Latte Love. Remember, this is gonna be with option one for your Latte Love class if you want this brand new stamp set and die. This will be included in that price, along with your quarter pack of designer paper and the squirrel dots, all right? So this will be launched on March 5th. This is what we're using today. And I did do a lot of, little bit of the die cutting and stuff ahead of time, but I'm gonna show you what I did. All right, so I'm gonna use a piece of crumb cake cardstock. This is your eight and a half by 11, so let me get my trimmer. All right, so you're gonna cut one piece of your crumb cake on the 11 inch side, because we're gonna cut it at eight and a half. Okay, so we're gonna cut this at four and a quarter by eight and a half. Four and a quarter by eight and a half. And then we're gonna turn it on the eight and a half inch side across the top, and we're gonna score this at a half an inch. Four and a quarter. and eight. Okay, this is going to be for the book part. Oh, that's what I was saying about how Sam called it the book cradle card. And at first I was like, well, that's kind of a weird name. Could I name, some, name it something else? But when you actually make the card, this is like, have you guys ever used like, um, like I have a, a cell phone holder. It's kind of like it just sits on the ledge. It's kind of like that. It's it's kind of like a cradle and then a book. But the book part doesn't actually open. It just sits up. So, so, oh, sorry. So, so cute. So, I get the why she named it the book cradle card. It's so very clever. All right. So, then this is the part that's going to sit up. All right. Now, we're going to cut another piece from that same piece of cardstock at four and a quarter. And then instead of eight and a half, we're going to turn it and cut it at six. So four and a quarter by six. And then we're going to score at one, one, two, three, four, and five. That's it, you guys. Seriously. That's it. And then we're going to score or fold all our score lines with and burnish with the bone folder. So let's go ahead and do that. This Saturday, this is another thing, too, I've been busy doing is cleaning up my classroom because I have my ladies coming over Saturday for some stamping fun. So I've been trying to get everything cleared up after my live tomorrow with my team. I'll be breaking down all this setup here so we can have both tables opened for everybody on Saturday. 
And then this weekend, we're also going out to Jesse and Nick's and we're putting in a backsplash for Jesse's kitchen. I'm going to actually fold these both ways. So I'm just folding it back on itself, all right? All right. Now, we're going to focus on this piece right now. This is the cradle part of the card. So what you're going to do is you're going to fold this in half on the three inch side or the three inch score line. So just fold it in half and we're gonna use liquid glue. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this in half on the three inch score line and then we're gonna take our liquid glue and we're gonna put it right on that one inch score line. That one, two, three, right, right here. Put your liquid glue on that, right where that fold is, right? And then you're just going to fold it up, okay? And you're just going to have to hold that for a couple seconds because the liquid glue takes a little bit to seal up. Yeah, so that's why I didn't post on Monday or Tuesday this week. Usually I post my card sketch on Monday and then Tuesday I would have posted about the, the card class. But I wasn't even done with that in time. I had still had to take pictures and get all the graphics done and everything. So... Today I posted an update on my blog, so hopefully you guys read it and then you guys got to see the whole drama, what's been going on in our life. So, all right, so we folded this up. Now we're going to flip it over and do the exact same thing on the other side with our three score lines. We're going to go up to that fold line. And we're going to put our liquid glue on that third score line section and then fold this section up again. Okay. So you're putting your glue right next to that three inch score line on that section and then folding both sides up. This is going to make your cradle to your card. So this is the way it's going to sit here. Okay. Like this, like an X. Okay. All right. Now let's go ahead and decorate our card. Let me give you all the pieces for this. I've already got all this piece done here. So I got some of the beautiful A Little Latte Love. And these two pieces are both cut the same. This is cut at three and a half by four. And these are gonna go on the pop-up piece of the card right here. So the one's gonna go here, and then you're gonna put one on the back. So three and a half by four, two of those. And then I cut four strips cut at three fourths by four. And I used all the same. So I use the little coffee cups because it really doesn't matter if it's directional or whatever on the, the cradle part. So you're going to cut four of those at three-fourths by four. Because remember, this is cut at four and a quarter, and then you're scoring at one inch. So it's just going to be a little border on your little sections here, okay? All right, let's go ahead and put our pieces on with liquid glue. We'll put two on this side. And then flip it over and do the other two on the other side. The cutoff date for my Latte Love class is March 4th. So you have until March 4th to order either option. And then after that, March 5th, I'm going to order everything. So it will be here when we get back from Houston, from on stage. All right, so my cradle has both of the designer paper strips on both sides. So two on each side, right? All right, and we're going to add our designer paper onto the front of our card. This looks like mocha. It looks so pretty. So put that one on one side. And then the other one. Flip that over. 
Okay. Isn't that paper pretty? Woo! It just looks like a really nice, pretty, creamy coffee, right? All right, now we're gonna, now this piece of basic white is cut at three by three and a half. That's gonna go on the back side of our card for signing, and then we'll add another cup and a greeting right there, all right? So now with these half inch score lines right here, we're gonna flip them forward towards the designer paper. And this is the way the card is gonna go into the cradle. Okay, so we're gonna put our liquid glue. Let me fold these a little bit better. We're gonna put our liquid glue on this side right here. And then this is gonna, let me show you. I'm gonna put our liquid glue, remember you're folding the half inch side up. And you're gonna put a little bit of glue on this half inch edge. I found that this helps the card set up a little bit better. So then you're going to take that half inch and you're going to take the top of your cradle and you're going to line those two edges up together with the four and a quarter inch length and then right up to the edge right there. And of course, just hold it down. And then do the other side the exact same way. Add a little bit of glue on that half inch score line. And then once again, take the other side of the cradle part and line that up right up to the edge. I'll show you a side view of this here. Hold on. Just right up together, right there at the edge. And then on the length part or the width right here. Okay, and then your cradle part is going to sit up, open this up here, this right here is going to be the sitting part of your card, right? So this is the way the card looks from the side, you see it? So this part is what's going to sit the card up. So cute! <laughs> Don't you love it? And then it folds flat for mailing, for putting it in the envelope. Yay! I absolutely love it. All right, now let me get a piece of basic white. I'm going to show you exactly what I did for my cups. Where is my basic white? I'll just use some scrap here. Hold on. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp my two cups. And what I did for that is I used the early espresso classic ink and I use the large cup that's in this latte love stamp set right here and we're going to stamp two cups so one and a two this might be too small of a piece of paper but I know it works all right and then you're going to take the die the die works great here's the big cup and you're gonna die cut those cups out, right? So cut those two cups out with the die. And then you're gonna stamp your coffee, which this is the coffee, let me show you on the stamp set. It shows up a little bit better. This is the coffee piece that you're gonna stamp inside the coffee cup. It makes it look so realistic, watch. I'm gonna show you, it looks so much better. So take this little oval stamp right here and you're going to stamp, actually, I already got my two cut out. So let me go ahead and stamp those since I've already got them cut out. Hold on. Get all my pieces out. Okay, so now there's also another way you could do the coffee cup. Not only stamping it. Let me show you the stamped. Show you the stamped. So you're going to stamp it right in the center of the cup. Look at that. Doesn't that look good? <laughs> then also in the die collection, you're gonna have this oval right here. This one right here. You can cut that out. And let me show you what that looks like. I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp my cups, but I wanna show you what this looks like. So you can put glue right here in the center of your cup. Just a little bit. I'm gonna take my, take your pick tool. Then pick up that oval and then you can put that inside the cup too. 
and that looks legit too. So either way, you can stamp it, but the stamp gives you the little, you know, like it's coffee in there. Can you see it up close? <laughs> the cardstock won't do that, but it looks good both ways, right? Looks really good. All right, so since I already got my cups already die cut out, so here these are. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp my cups with the coffee. But you could do the cardstock way too if you wanted, all right? So we're going to stamp the coffee there and the coffee here. Okay, so there's my coffee cups with their coffee. I think, wait. All right, let me stamp my greeting here for the back. You know what, we'll do the back here in a second. I took the petal pink to match the designer paper and then I took pool party. So I'm just gonna outline my cups with the Stampin' Blends. I'm gonna do one with the petal pink and color the handle. So I thought the petal pink looked good with the pool party. Outline all the up little lines here okay so there's my petal pink I'll show you up close here look how cute okay and then I'm going to do the same thing with the pool party just color the rim of the cup and then outline the cup There's the pool party. Okay, so it kind of goes with the, the paper. See, this is what I was going with, the, the petal pink because of the paper, okay? But we still need that, don't we? All right, and then, where's my finished card at to see what I did? There it is. All right, so then I went ahead and stamped, hello there, let's catch up with the early espresso. I'm just stamping on scrap. And then what I did for this is I took the stylus shapes and I took the largest banner and I just die cut that out. That fits in there perfectly. So run that through your die cut machine and I've already done that. So I have that here. And then I also took some foil sheet and I cut out the two spoons, which are right here. Aren't they cute? These are in the die collection. Okay. Wait, I dropped my card. Hold on. Okay. All right. And then from the designer paper, which is here, is my designer paper. One moment. There it is. All right. So from my designer paper here, we have this really cute paper. Not only these cups are really cute but you have two other cups and you have your choices of whichever ones you want to use. I'm going to use the short squatty pink one just because the square is a little bit small in the back. So, and there's no dye to cut the cups, but they're really super easy to cut out with your scissors or your paper snips. Okay. So cute. All right. So I cut out my cup. This is going to go on the back and then I got my, my steam. Let me show you how I did my steam. I got a piece of vellum cardstock. We're going to put this card together here in a second. All right, so let me show you on the stamp set what the steam is. This is the coffee steam or hot cocoa steam, whatever you want to use that. So this is the steam stamp, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to stamp this with Versamark, and then we're going to emboss it with the white embossing powder. That's the coffee. Here's the steam. Oh, wait, my embossing buddy. Let me do that. <clears throat> so we're gonna stamp. We're gonna use um, on two of the coffees on the front and one on the back, so we would need three. So we're gonna stamp three steams. coffee this coffee steam right and then emboss it with the white embossing powder okay so 
so I don't know if you can see that, but there's my coffee steam. <laughs> Does that look legit? <laughs> All right, and then we're gonna heat set that with the heat tool. So let me just shoot this up with some heat because I can use these for another card later. Let me get my heat tool. All right, so this is a heat tool. Remember, this gets very, very hot. I'm just going to put this right onto that image, or those images that we just stamped and embossed. It's going to turn white. Okay. Okay, so there's my steam on the vellum. And then I'm just going to take my paper snips. And these are very easy to cut out too. So I'm just going to cut these out by following the shape of the steam. Right, it's a little S shape kind of. And then just cut that out. And I've already got all three cut out. So I just wanted to show you what I did. So there's one of my steams right there. Okay. All right, and I've already got all those done. So now we're going to go ahead and build the card. So we're going to put first put our hello there, and I'm going to use my dimensionals. What's really cute about this card is that it sits up, and the message of whatever you put on the front, it just like sits up so cute, and it's just like right in their face. So we're just going to put hello there. Let's catch up. So it's going to go right there on the top. And then I'm going to use both of my cups. So I'm going to take my pool party and my petal pink cup. And I'm going to put my pool party one over here. Let me see. I think I went kind of high on this one. Yeah, I went over here towards the, on the banner, right? And then I'm going to offset this one with the petal pink. I'm going to come down a little bit. So they're both on there really cute, like offsetting each other. And then for my steam, I'm going to use the mini glue dots. I'm going to put one on the top and one on the bottom. Whoa, where'd it go? There it is. Let me get my steams here. I'm going to put one on the top. This is on the back side. Making sure you're putting your glue dot over top or on the back side of the actual embossed part so it doesn't show through the vellum. I'm just rolling the glue dot between my fingers to make it skinny. And I'm going to put one on the bottom and one on the top. And there is like a certain way the steam goes on. You can see like how it fans out a little bit at the top and on the left hand side. So I'm going to take that steam and we're just going to put this right on the coffee in the center and press that down. So there's one. Isn't it cute? Cute. Oh my gosh. Let's do another steam here. Now my other card, I used the Early Espresso cardstock like we did on the stamping of the coffee. So you can see both ways. If you want to stamp it or if you want to just punch out the little oval for the coffee part. You know what I mean? So we're just putting a glue dot at the top and the bottom of the steam. And then this one's going to go on the petal pink. Look how cute. <laughs> Don't you guys love it? And then we're going to pop the spoons up with the mini dimensionals, which I have right here. Mini dimensionals. <clears throat> and these are with the silver foil sheet. Which all these pieces, they're not going to be die cut for you. And stamped images won't be stamped for the kit. But you're going to get every all the pieces to stamp and to die cut. Okay? For your kit to complete your cards. And then like shapes like this. This is not one of the cards by the way. But if this was one of the cards, you would get the, the banner die cut. But then you have to stamp on it. You know what I mean? So you'll get all your pieces to make all six cards, okay? And then this one with this spoon kind of angling up, this one is going to go across the bottom. Maybe like that, yeah. Okay, 
So there's the front of the card. And see, look how cute it sits up when they're like, they put this on their desk or, you know, on their end table or something. It's just going to sit up so cute. All right, now let's do the back side. We've got the basic white piece. Remember, that was three by three and a half. And I'm going to put the cup on first because I'm going to stamp the greeting along the side of that. So I want to make sure the cup is fitting on the back really cute already. So I'm just going to put this cut out um, cup with the coffee. And then where's my other steam at? I have one more steam somewhere. There it is. All right, so I need my glue dots again. Because this one's going to get steam too. Right? I think the steam makes it look so cute. Personally. Okay. And this steam is going to go right here. Oh, wait, that's upside down. You'll be able to tell when you put it on. Okay, so there's the cup on the back. <laughs> and then we're going to stamp. You're the best part of my day in early espresso. And that's going to be stamped right over here on the left-hand side. And again, it's a photopolymer stamp set, so you can see exactly right where you're stamping. How cute! So this is going to be the back side, so you can sign a little message or whatever. Or you don't even have to put the cup on there. I just think the cup makes it so much cuter. All right, and then we're going to... Did I pop that up? Yeah, I popped that up on dimensionals. I thought I did. All right, so just pop this up. You can put more dimensionals if you want. I'm just trying to be quick about it. Then we're just going to put this on the back side of our card. Oh, look at it. So cute. And then it sets up so adorable. I love it. Now, tell me, was that card easy or what? The fun part was decorating it, of course, but really, really fun. All right, now here is the one with the early espresso oval cutout. So you can see the difference. And then you can tell me which one you like the best. Which one do you like better, the stamped coffee or the cardstock coffee? <laughs> there is a difference. The cardstock, or I'm sorry, the stamped coffee, you can see the little, like, liquidy, right? And then the cardstock is just darker and, yeah, just more bold, I guess. Like black coffee, right? Does anybody blink, drink black coffee? I almost do. I do the Nespresso coffee pod. I think it's um, Charo, I think. So apparently it's a stronger coffee, but I put water to it. And then I put my collagen, a dump of collagen into it. So I don't put milk or sugar or anything in it. So which one do you guys like better, the stamped or the cardstock coffee? But they both sit up so cute. Let me set this one up. Ta-da! I love it. So, seriously, you guys got to agree with me. This was an easy card, right? I know, it looks really, like when you look at the side, you're like, how did they do that? Right? Thank you, Sam, and thank you, Michelle, for showing me this card. I absolutely love it. Oh, Angie said she likes black coffee. Yay! Yes, I drink black coffee. Have for years, Margaret. Yay! A lot of black coffee drinkers. Richard can drink his coffee black. I just can't do it. I, I just can't. I know, you know what it is, is because your taste buds adjust right so I know it's a matter of just doing it for like two weeks but I don't know I just like my coffee the way I do it cream no sugar who said that yeah you know what I also tried like um when the girls come to the retreat in August they usually bring their favorite creamers and stuff so like I know Devette likes I think Devette likes almond joy and then I think Stacy likes Almond Joy, but they have so many flavored creamers out there. And I've tried them and they really upset my stomach. I can't drink it. And then I tried Coffee Mate.
that was even worse on my stomach. But I, I read the, um, not the directions, but I read the ingredients. And, you know, there's like, there's a lot of crap in that coffee meat. And it's like a lot of oil. So I don't know if that was what really messed up my stomach when I used the creamers. But I cannot use creamers at all. So I just used the, um, I use a peanut butter flavored collagen. <laughs> I got Richard hooked on it too. He likes it. But yeah, and that's all I do. And then I dilute my coffee so it's not so strong. Oh, you oh, you know what? We um used my frother too to mix up my collagen so it's nice and not so clumpy. But Richard does the frother with the um when he wants to make his coffee really fancy, he'll use like uh one percent or um what is that? Uh what is the cream? Is it coffee cream? It's like just cream. He'll froth it, like in the frother or with my handheld frother. So, no sugar. Lots of chemicals in coffee meat. Yes, that's what I was thinking, Jeanne, because my stomach, I could not do it. Yeah, it's not good for my stomach. So, it's kind of partially black for me then, I guess. Use whipping cream. Ooh, yeah, like the whipped cream that we put on our pumpkin pie at Thanksgiving. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Pumpkin pie. Element chocolate. You know what? We use, um, uh, so Richard and I have been, we started around Christmas time. We take our uh, amino acids or amino, aminos. Yeah, we just take our aminos. We take them um, twice a day, once in the morning, once before we go to bed. And Richard got a chocolate flavor, so that's what he puts in his coffee. But it makes me almost like, it's like, smells disgusting in the coffee, but he likes it. But, um, yeah, so I have used, uh, um, I have used Element, but I like Redmond's better. But that's good. Element, you drink Element. That's good. Your little, um, for your sodium, magnesium, and potassium. Way to go, girl. Congratulations, Robin. That's awesome if you're drinking Element. Yay. That's good stuff for your body. If you get a lot of Charlie horses, you know, get some Redmond's or some Element. They have, that's really good for um, potassium and magnesium. Love lots of vanilla creamer. You know, there's a joke when the girls come to the retreat. They're like, do you want some coffee with your creamer? <laughs> because they put so much creamer, it's like almost white. Like a dash of coffee and creamer. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh. All right. Do you guys want me to do another giveaway? Let me see. What do I got here? I just brought two things over. But where did I put it? I'll give you guys. Oh, here it is. I got some more of the hearts and flowers. I'll give you guys one of those, all right? Oh. You know what? I would give these cards away, but I need them for birthdays, you guys. My team has got lots of birthdays this month, so, and I'm behind already sending them out, so, yeah, I will catch up. It's just, you know, first things first, right? All right. Um, I drink coffee with nut flavor like pecan. Ooh, that sounds good. Um, my daughter-in-law uses collagen in her coffee also. Oh, good taste there, Jean, she has. Um, I've tried, they have a, I like the peanut butter the best, but I did get another flavor and it was gross. So, you know, it's just maybe I'm just set in my ways. I just like what I like. I love them both equally. <laughs> That's funny, Pat. <laughs> I use oat milk. Oh, yeah. Jesse gives Griffey oat milk. But oat milk has a lot of sugar in it, you guys. So be careful. Oat milk, is, I mean, not a lot of sugar. I mean, maybe it is a lot of sugar. I always look at the carbs. You guys know I'm a carnivore at heart. So um, I'm always looking at the carbs since I, you know, had my little episode a few years ago. So, um... Also, if you guys could be praying, tomorrow I go to a new rheumatologist. My other rheumatologist that I was going to for 21 years, he's retiring. So now, tomorrow is my first visit with the new rheumatologist. So it's like, 
I spent half the day today filling out forms and stuff because, you know, you when you go to a new doctor, it's like they want all this information, what medications you're on and all this and that. So I got everything already done. So hopefully I won't have to do it at the office today or t for tomorrow morning. I got to go tomorrow morning. So, um... Yeah, and it's and it's like in a new location I'm not familiar with. So, you know, it's all like out of my comfort zone, going to a new doctor, a new area, a new location. But I'm sure it's going to be fine. It's just, you never know, with meeting new people. And it was funny because my, my past doctor, my past rheumatologist, he when he was telling me he was retiring, he sent me a letter and stuff. So it was, like, you know, kind of preparing me that, you know, the next four months he's going to be retiring. So he said... This is the new doctor that's going to take all my patients. He said, now, can you do me a favor? And I'm like, yeah, what do you want me to do? He said, I want you to be nice to this new doctor. And I'm like, I am so nice to everybody. What do you mean? Be nice. Like, have I ever been mean to anybody? And we both laugh. But I'm like, what the heck? What doctor says, can you make me a promise and be nice to the new doctor? I've never been mean to him. <laughs> I don't know. Just makes me laugh. So, um, but you know what he's saying, because he used to, um, be my rheumatologist, he used to be my dad's rheumatologist. Now my dad, you guys never met my dad. He's passed away now, but, um, he, my dad had like, um, he just had a, a really spicy, um, personality, let's just say. And so he was my dad's rheumatologist too but my dad's gone now so he knows my dad and he's probably thinking that I'm probably a lot like my dad because I'm kind of spicy and I speak my mind I don't have no filter which is probably bad in some ways but you know at least I'm honest you know <laughs> I don't know sometimes it's good sometimes it's bad but I think that's what he was saying about you know don't be like your dad be nice <laughs> I don't know <sighs> so tomorrow's a big day I get to see a new doctor Yay. I'm so looking forward to it. I don't like having to change doctors. And I feel like all the doctors are retiring too lately. Maybe it's just because I'm getting older, but it's so weird. Oh, you like black coffee too, Sharon? Drink way too much. I probably have like two cups. And I really milk it all day. So I bring it down here. Yeah, and just kind of drink on it all day. Ortho doctor retired when I was a teenager and I was not happy. I know. Nothing wrong with being spicy. Thank you, Holly. I agree. So, like, my husband, he always says, like, if I get, like, he says, like, when I get, like, when I raise my voice because I'm, like, you know, boisterous sometimes, believe it or not, <laughs> he'll say, okay, now don't be so excited. So that's my excited voice, I guess. So when I get like a little boisterous or I speak my mind. Yeah, I feel like that comes with being a mom too. Because, you know, when you, you know, you start, yeah, it's just funny. All right, let's go ahead. Thank you. Whoever said that, you'll be fine. Well, you know what my thought is, is you know what? You know, if I got to like him, but he's got to like me too, the way I am. So... But I am on medication that I need my blood work done. Or I probably wouldn't even go to him, you know. I don't know. We'll see. I'll let you guys know. I'll keep you posted. <laughs> All right, let's do a spinning. A uh, glitter spinner, I should say, right? Let me get my spinner. All right, these are for the flowers and hearts, all right? So let me <clears throat> spin the comments. Okay, hold on a minute. Spinning, spinning. Ooh, it's going by so fast. Thank you guys for chiming in, being a part of our live today. I love it. All right, right here. Who is that? Mary! Mary, Mary. I was just talking to you yesterday, Mary. All right, so Mary, I'm going to send you these hearts. You won! Mary. Sickler. You got the hearts and the flowers. All right. All right. Congratulations, Mary. Woohoo! So I will, I have your address too. So Mary, I will get these and Margaret, I will get your dots sent out, your rainbow dots right here. 
I'll get these sent out to you guys tonight. Yay. All right. Also, say a prayer for my husband's tooth. I know he's doing better, especially after the week we've had with him being in so much pain. But um, you guys know we've been dehydrating meat to make like the carnivore crispy. And then he he's dehydrating hamburger to make hamburger sticks. And I remember when he did it because he bit down and he was like, <gasps> he said some bad words and I won't repeat it on here. But I'm like, oh my gosh, what happened? He's like, oh my tooth. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. So he did it when he ate the hamburger. And then, you know, he let it go, let it go. But apparently... It's been hurting for like over a year and he just didn't tell me. So now it got to the point where he was over it. He had to go in and get it done. So I just wonder if he would have went in a year ago, he probably could have just got away with a root canal, but not anymore. Yeah, so um, my mom had a, an implant done years ago and it's not... Um, it's not really an easy procedure, you know, so I know why they charge you so much, but hers was like, I want to say my mom's watching. I'm pretty sure she said it was like 2,300. Yeah. So figure double that now. So that's what Richard's going to be paying for his double that. So yeah, but now that it's fixed, he should be good, right? So, but yeah, I appreciate all your prayers for his tooth too. But I'm thankful it never hurt when we were on vacation or away, you know, especially overseas or something with the Stampin' Up! incentive trip or something. And it's just like, that would be the pits. Being in that much pain, being on vacation, wouldn't want to do nothing. So, yeah, and it's really weird because his, because it's his right bottom back tooth is where it was. And it's his right side of his neck and his right shoulder. So I bet, this is just me talking to you guys, but I bet that tooth, because it was infected too. So I bet that was affecting his neck and his shoulder. And I bet you all that clears up now. Because he takes three pills for antibiotic every day for like 10 days. And then he's doing an antibiotic mouthwash and stuff. So it's clearing it up. But um, I bet you that shoulder and neck's not going to hurt that much anymore. Because you know how that all is like in there, you know? <sighs> right? You got that right, Deborah. I'm not going to repeat it because my husband could hear it upstairs. <laughs> oh my gosh. I hope the doctors are helping you. That can be tough. Yes. But you know what? I feel like Richard and I have been helping ourselves. We've been on this journey, you know, a health journey. So we've been trying to just find our way through certain things. And in time, I'm hoping to share a lot of that with you guys. But right now, it's just kind of a trial and error with ourselves. So, But we're doing amazing. We're really, really feeling really great. So I am down to... 5%. So I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you guys all so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you guys taking time out and joining me here live every Wednesday. All you faithful GPC people. <laughs> that GPC is my glitter pit crew. You guys know who you are. All of you guys are my glitter pit crew. But every time you guys join in the early bird chat, it just makes me so happy that you guys remember to come join me. We make something pretty or cute or fun every week. So if you like what you see, share what you see, and then also subscribe and give me a thumbs up, please. I appreciate that. YouTube loves that when you do that. And I will see you guys next Wednesday at 3 o'clock Eastern, all right? I love you guys. Thanks so much for being a part of my life. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.